well, we're kind of sad and excited at the same time. It's a it's a sad and happy day. We're sad because Rick Zanotti, our regular co-host with me, is stuck in New York, but excited because we have Brandy Cagino. And I used to say Bra- Brandy Cagino, but Brandy, we just discovered your last name is Japanese. So um, it is. exciting. Welcome to Shrek Tech. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. It's so fun to be here. Your company is Soho Solutionist. Yes. Well, I'm actually, I started out as a spatial organizer, so I worked in offices and did all of that. And then my clients wanted more technology, so I went that route. Because we live in this glorious time of, you know, things like this and this (laughs) and the phone, which I can't find. We have all this stuff, though, that can really help us leverage our time and be able to get things done. But in order to use those things, they were really kind of overwhelmed and like, okay, well, how does how does an iPad help me in business? Well, oh, my gosh, if you only knew. So um, so we started working with those kinds of things. And of course, you know, occasionally we'll cover the office stuff, you know, of how to do that. But generally, I found that with organizing, most people know that they should do it. (laughs) People know their desk shouldn't look like this. But right. right, but you know, somehow we manage, and so I even with my clients, I used to tell them if you can find what you need in five minutes or less, you're gonna be all right. Yeah, so it, yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect, it really doesn't. So, um, but that's that's how I came to work with the technology piece, and I love it. That is very exciting, and it's interesting because my desk really isn't that bad as it used to be because I used to use a lot more paper. I used to use a lot of sticky notes. I was addicted to sticky notes, and now yeah. I, I can't even find a pad of sticky notes. I don't use sticky notes, and and you know a lot of it has to do with my iPad. I live with my iPad. I I, I keep my grocery list on there with Grocery IQ. Love that app. Um, anyway, yeah. side note on that. Um, yeah. So my desk has a lot less paper on it, yeah. which is nice. And I do yeah. things online that I used to need paper statements. And so I think that that does help. Yeah. I look at some of the tools that really do help us be more effective with business. You know, you can blog from your tablet, you can do your email on your iPad. So you can just do more in less time or in that filler time when you're able to work mobily. What what do you find are some of the, still some of the biggest challenges that you hear from entrepreneurs? Oh, I think the biggest challenge is fear. You know, they're afraid to use something new because they're going to screw it up. You know, oh, it's like, you know, it, it, it's okay. And that that's kind of the biggest thing is the fear of, I don't know what that is. I know how to operate, how I'm doing it right now. Right. And to add something on top of that is they feel really overwhelming. I guess if you're not an adventurer, I always say, gosh, it's to me, it's almost like being an adventurer and an explorer <laughs> every yeah. week going, there's new waters to, to explore. Exactly. And it's exciting. Um, and, and you know, I'm, I'm always, I always talk about there's digital natives and there's digital immigrants and the digital yeah. natives are typically under 35, typically not always, but you right. know, digital natives grew up with the technology around them. Not that they all love it, but they're just used to it. I mean, it's it's kind of like being born before electricity and after electricity. Yeah. Digital natives, they're born with gadgets and cell phones, and they just know what they are. They, again, they may not like them, but they they know what they are and how they work. Okay. Um, digital immigrants, my age category, um, yes. you know, digital immigrants are those we were not born into this digital landscape, but we have immigrated into this landscape, and some, like myself, love it. Love new lands, love traveling to new places. So to me, it makes technology exciting. But you're right. If you're afraid to try new things, you have to have the mindset of, okay, this month I'll play with one new tech platform or new tool. Whether it's, you know, I'm going to finally sign up for a LinkedIn account or Facebook page or, you know, something. And, And I think small businesses, I think you get overwhelmed because you have to wear so many hats. And I, I need, I need to do my bookkeeping and then I need to have my marketing plan and I need to have my sales hat on, which some people lump together and looking at marketing specifically, because I'm always looking at technology and how we use it to build business. I mean, I know that you use social media. Is that still, um, I mean, are you having to spend a lot of time with entrepreneurs on teaching them how to incorporate that into their regular marketing? I think that they sort of get that it's important 
Um, I think how to use it specifically, like once you get past the, okay, I have a username and a password and <laughs> now what? Now what? You know, yeah. right. So they, they see the value in it, but sort of there's all these, as you know, there's a lot of nuances to all of the social media tools. Right. So, you know, how do you converse with someone? How do you introduce yourself? How do you say, hey, I really liked what you said in a proper way? Right. So there's all this etiquette, you know, um, and little tricks to learn. So that that is a challenge for people. Again, it's that, I don't know what to do. What if I screw it up? What if I say something wrong? Right. And you know, it's there's so much to it that you just kind of learn as you go. Yeah. You know, it's, I always tell people, you have to just jump in, tell yourself for 30 days you're going to just study Facebook. And, right. you know, or for 30 days, jump on Twitter, even though people swear they'll never use Twitter and they don't need Twitter. I would say you need Twitter to drive people to your Facebook page that you, you're saying you have a hard time getting people there. You do right. need to go out and cultivate relationships and then invite them to discussions that are a little deeper or sharing videos and, and photos on your Facebook page. And then it's really that, like you said, how to, like, what, what do I do today? What yeah. specific tasks are necessary for my marketing today? And do you work with entrepreneurs on that whole concept, either, either what tools to use or creating more videos? Right. So I work with them primarily on the tools that they use to make the video or make the audio, you know, what are the latest things, which Gosh, I mean, every day, you know, I'm there's scanning through my news and I'm like, oh, look, a new toy, you know, <laughs> but there's all kinds of great stuff that's available. And a lot of it, like, ironically, is free to yeah. use right. to get started. You know, if you're just getting started, then don't be afraid to just jump in there and try it out. And, you know, I, I get into this conversation with a gal that I know about video and I said, you know, um, I just... A friend of mine did a whole video blog on his iPhone for an entire year. Right. And so, yeah, it doesn't, I mean, we're doing this on Skype. It doesn't have to be professionally done. There's a place for that. Don't get me wrong. And There's I have to give away place. our secret, Brandy, because you and I both yes. have, we're, we're doing Skype via our laptops. Yes. And our laptops don't have any fancy camera built on or added on. And we didn't go out and buy. It's the camera that's built into the laptop. Yeah. But here's the, here's the trick that I do see a lot of people make this mistake. We both have our laptops yeah. sitting on a cardboard box, which is pretty yes. darn funny. When I saw you move your box, I was like, mine's sitting on a box too. Mine's a shoe <laughs> box. Um, but here's yes. what's interesting. People that don't put their laptop up on a box, their video is sitting down low, and the angle is very unflattering. Um, right. <laughs> Here, let's, let's, let's show. What? Let, if yeah. I do this. Okay, I'm going to take my box off. You take your box let's... off. Yeah, that's not cute. That's not well, cute. Well, yeah, it's like you're looking up somebody's nostrils. Yeah. And, you know, it usually gives you a double chin because you're looking down. So I always tell people, just put a cardboard box under. Yes. You know, and all of a sudden, look, high tech right there, people. This is how simple it is. And, right. and I do think that that fear of I need to know some technical or even the fact that we're doing Skype. Oh, my gosh, what's involved? How did you guys record that? Well, you open Skype. There's a free tool I use on my Mac um, when I mm -hmm. do recording. Call It's called just Call Recorder. Um, yeah. On a PC, I believe it's called Burner. No, mm -hmm. VOD, VOD Burner. Well, there's a couple of them. VOD yeah, Burner is the one I use on my on my PC. But most of the time I do on uh, everything on my Mac because it's easier to edit. Yeah. But it's free. You download it. And every time I open Skype, Call Recorder opens up on the side and says, do you want to record this? And I, if I want to record it, I push the little red button. I mean, it's that simple. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's, it's not simple. It's just not as hard as people think. Now, I think, and you tell me what your thoughts are on this. I think a lot of people are afraid to be on camera because you and I were saying, you do have to get Skype yes. ready. You know, and some yeah. people don't want to be in front of the camera. You know, as you probably know, Gina, I've got an audio podcast that I have played with a few times. I and love it. Yeah, and that's really fun, too. And, you know, if you're Doesn't kind of wigged out by video, yeah, you can do audio. Now, but, what do you use? What tools do you use to do your audio podcast? Well, the audio podcast, I use Audacity, which is an open source tool for PC. So you use a you use Audacity to record. Right. And I, I use Audacity, Audacity to record. Edit. Yeah. Edit, produce, all of that. And then I use uh, WordPress with, um, I was using Blueberry's plugin to produce the show and put it on my blog. So is Blueberry just a, you're adding that plugin onto your WordPress and that gives yeah. you a little player? 
Yeah. So it gives you a little player, but it also puts it in the Blueberry podcasting community and oh, does all this other great stuff. So it helps market. Stuff. Okay. Yes, and puts it on iTunes, so that's nice. And how much does that cost? It's free. Free, people. Free. free. Our favorite word. As a small business, there's small tools business. out there. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. There. Exactly. Um, yeah, it is interesting. It's you know, there's a lot of tools, and I think again, it can be overwhelming when your business is not having to do with technology to have to think of another. You know, and it's not. We talk about so many different tools, and I think yeah. sometimes people think, "Oh, I need to use all of those." You just need to find one. If you like audio, then you know, download and try yeah. Audacity. You, you can play yeah. and not right. break your computer. Yeah, yeah. And that's, I mean, what's fun about Audacity is that you can, it does, it, there is a little bit of a learning curve, but with if you use any, like, I get overwhelmed when I look at Camtasia. Oh, yeah. Oh! To learn it, go to YouTube, yeah. type in how to use Audacity, and you'll yeah. find probably a thousand videos, tutorials, oh, yeah. free, to learn yeah. how to do. And what I do is I'll watch a video, I'll pause the video, I'll go over and open the program and try up to that point, go back to the video, hit play, watch a little. I mean, I think yeah. as an entrepreneur, there's no excuse for not learn, not knowing something. Yeah. There's a video on everything. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. I, oh. I mean, everything. Everything. I wanted to know how to do spiral curls in my hair. I went to YouTube. There's there. a thousand of them. I'm like, no <laughs> I, way. I, learned, I learned how to mix the oil and gas ratio for my weed whacker on YouTube. <laughs> you know, and I think as a small business, whatever it is you're trying to do, if you're trying to get better at sales, you know, check out the free resources that are available that technology can bring into your office for right. free. And then, right. you know, reach out and obviously networking and, and going to other learning events. But looking at what's at our fingertips today, there's just so much out there that can yeah. help us. But, Brandy, what, what would you say is, um, I mean, when do you give tips, I'm assuming, for um, entrepreneurs, small uh, small businesses? What type, like what, if you had to give two tips on really successfully using technology in your business, what do you tell people? Well, I think you need to start with whatever it is that's driving you crazy. So if there, if keeping track of your tasks is something that is like driving you absolutely crazy, then start with a tool for that. Um, so start with what is driving you crazy. But secondly, I tell my members, my Soho Tech Training members all the time, th you have to think about when implementing a new technology tool, what's, what is your hassle factor? How, how much off the chart do you want to go? Like if something is really difficult to pick up and learn, um, and I tell them, you know, when I tell them about a new tool, okay, this one has kind of a high hassle factor, oh, and this one has kind of a low, yeah. So there's, you know, and I would, like Audacity, I would sort of put that at a medium. Right. Um, so, but it depends on, you know, what you're looking for. So if you need to produce an audio podcast, well, Audacity is going to be the one you're going to have to learn. So you're going to have to know right. that you're going to hassle to figure it out. I love that. But it's going to be worth it in the end. Right. So I've got one client who she gets really frustrated, right. you know, really, really frustrated. I'm like, look, you don't need that. You know, oh, I want to do this big website, blah, blah, blah. Okay, listen, you don't know how to do that, and you're just going to be annoyed by it. So right. let's figure out something more simple that would work for you instead. That's a really good point. And I think when you're looking even at social media is really weighing the cost. And I have to commit to checking in in the morning and in the afternoon. I have yeah. to check in because if I'm opening my store, someone has to be there. And right. it makes me crazy that people put together a beautiful Facebook page, lots of great graphics and content. They never answer questions. People post a question. Nobody nobody replies, you know. Right. So weigh the cost, like you said, of doing any taking on any of these new tasks yeah. and say, Will I commit to doing this or how can I bring in some help? Yeah. Yeah. Well and and the other thing is that I think when people look at social media, they look at the big long list of tools and they think, Oh, I have to do them all. And so what I tell my clients and my members is no, time out, stop, stop. So ask your clients and your potential customers what 
what communities are they involved in? And then pick two or three of those and then hammer on those. Right. You know, you don't have to do them all. And then you can ask those same clients that you survey to join you over there at your, you know, there you if, go. if they're all on Facebook, now you know they're there. You can go back and say, because of your f- feedback, I'm, I am started a new Facebook page where I'm going to share great content that will be helpful for you. Please join me. And immediately you'll have people come over because they feel like they're part of your plan. Okay, so you're an iPad um, user. What, is, what are some of your favorite apps for business? I got this little keyboard. Oh, the keyboard. Okay. Yes. So, and what's nice about it, it's a Zag keyboard. And are you, and it my iPad, oh. yeah, it fits inside. Oh, so it acts so, as like a cover, protects it. Yes. So it does that. And then if I can open it quickly here, it also sits inside. Oh, love that. it. So, so it's like a little laptop. laptop. Yeah. So my son calls it my mini laptop, but you know, Okay, now, so you're carrying, do you carry that with you? You close it and use it as a case to carry? Yeah, I do. I actually would like some sort of shoulder bag so I can put it on. It's a little big to go in my purse. But. I did just see. I saw a, um, a little pocket that held your iPad, so it was the size of an iPad, and then it had outside pockets on that pocket for cords, and that slips in your purse. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I'll have to yeah. send. I, I just posted that on... I think Facebook. Well, one of my favorite apps that I absolutely could not live without is Evernote. Oh, Evernote. I I love you. That always comes up as people's favorites. And I think you have to start using it for a while. You have to force yourself to use it before it really becomes valuable. Absolutely. It's well, and the thing about Evernote, it does so many brilliant things, but I tell people it's like sticky notes on steroids. That's what I use now instead of sticky notes. Yes. Right. So, and the thing of it is, when you keep notes in Evernote, you can search them. For people who don't use it yet, you can search those notes later. Right. It doesn't right. matter if it's a picture. You can take a picture of some sort of document or if it's a handwritten note. Oh, my gosh. I mean, I think when I super duper fell in love with it was when I had a handwritten note and I searched for a word and it found the word in the Evernote handwritten picture that I had to. It was crazy. Oh, so was you like, took a picture of the handwritten note and... And it pulled the word out of the hand. Oh, yeah. Note. You didn't even tag that Oh, yeah. Out. Come on. Love that is cool. it even more. Wow. I know. It's cool. I didn't know you could do that. Another one I love is, um, there's a lot of them, but Zeit is a news aggregator. Oh, my gosh. That's yeah. my morning newspaper. That's exactly yeah. what I tell people. Regardless of what industry you're in, yeah. that should be your daily newspaper that you read. Open up Zite and choose your industry, topics, right. blogs, things that you like. Yeah. Now you're staying up to date on what's going on with your uh, news. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And there's also um, Flipboard and Pulse are also right. great. But I just happen to like, I like the way Zite looks because it's white and it kind of reminds me of a magazine. And it's interesting because I was such a Flipboard fan. I love the fact that when yeah. you slide your finger, it looks like pages turning. But yeah. Zite, I like the fact that it gets smarter the more you read it by voting. I like this content. I like that writer. Um, yep. Find more oh, yeah. on this top, you know. I yeah, I that. like that whole, like, it'll show you more. And then I end up right. tweeting or, and you can send Evernote. You can send things to Evernote in Zite. Another one I really like is Goodreader. Oh, I am and- not using that. Oh, gosh. Yeah. So really Life's that's your, it's like Google Reader um, pulling your blog. Oh, my gosh. It does everything. So it'll pull in um, Google Apps stuff. It'll pull in PDFs. You can pull things off of Dropbox. Um, you can pull almost any sort of document that you want to be able to read on the go with your iPad right, into right. Goodreader. And then it'll um, it'll index them. So it's yeah, I, I love it. So it's, a lot of times I'll come across an ebook and it's really long and I want to read it, but I don't, you know, I don't want to print it out because that's right. kind of lame, right? It's <laughs> like yeah. Yeah. argument. Why would you pay? Yeah, which is funny because I used to do the same thing. I print a bunch of things to read on the plane. Yeah, yeah. So it's like that's kind of lame. Hello, yeah. hello. Yeah, that's what our yeah. tablets are for. Yeah, so I love Goodreader, and then you can you can um, yeah you can pull documents from almost anywhere. So let's say you're going to a client location and you need to bring some documents with you, you just put it in Goodreader. Oh, that's a great use. So then you have their cl- their contract, you have your proposal, you have documents on their company, everything with you in one spot. 
Oh yeah, it's very nice. Good very reader. Nice. I like that. Yeah, the other the other one I just downloaded the other day, which was like half off, was um, Log Me In. So if you need to get to your PC, I had downloaded another one called Splash Top, and that was okay, except that my computer would go to sleep. And they can't that. access it. You're like, excuse me, could you wake up, please? That is interesting. I've heard people say that that's a problem. So Log Me In. Yes, it will wake it up to, out of a sleep, I think. Randy, we could talk tech. I, I could tell. We could talk tech all day, all week. All day. Yeah, there's so much. But <laughs> yeah. great tips and great information. Um, and how can people get a hold of you if they want to work with you or listen to your great podcasts? Well, they can find me on Twitter. I'm B Kajino, B K A J I N O. And you can find my website at Soho Solutionist, kind of like a hairstylist. The Solutionist. Soho Solutionist. Yeah. Yes. Dot Not the com. Illusionist. But the yes. solutionist. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Soho Solutionist. That's me. Dot com. Yes. That's Brandy, yes, ma'am. thank you so much. Rick, you missed out on all the girl talk. Um, have a great week. And make sure everybody uh, follow us on Facebook. We have our Shrek Tech Facebook page. You can catch past episodes of Shrek Tech there. You can also catch our show notes on our Facebook page. And even if you're not a Facebook person, we, we do have a few people that still are resisting. They're not on Facebook. You can still go to the Facebook page. You just can't comment or like. And I don't think people realize that. So you can still go check out Facebook.com slash 